Hello everybody, it's Andy from Andy's Travel Blog and I wanted to do a video talking about my favorite pictures from 2017. And because top 10 lists are all the rage, thanks to BuzzFeed and Business Insider and all them, I wanted to do my top 10 pictures from 2017. Now before I get into that, I don't know if you've heard about the recent like YouTube uh, partner program changes. Uh, basically you have to have Within the last 12 months, you need to have 4,000 hours of watch time, which I'm good on. You also have to have 1,000 subscribers, which I'm not good on yet. So hopefully by the time you watch this, I'll have way more than 1,000 subscribers. But if I don't, if you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. But anyways, let's get right to my top 10 pictures from 2017. Number 10, Rakatsbrücke Bridge in Eastern Germany. Now you've probably seen this bridge all over the internet before, on Pinterest before, everything else. I took this picture last March. I was out in uh, Berlin for ITB Berlin uh, and got to see the new Qatar Q suites, the, the unveiling of those. It was, it was always funny to be like jostling for position to take pictures with Brian Kelly from the points guy right next to me and a couple of his people. It was mad fun. It was kind of unorganized, but it was a lot of fun. Anyways, uh, this bridge is in the eastern part of Germany, near the Polish border uh, with Germany, and it's, it's not near anything, and it's, it's technically in the small village of a town called Krumlau, uh, but it's not near anything. So uh, I went ahead, rented a car, drove down to Krumlau, and went to see this bridge and did this really cool drone video, almost crashed my drone into the lake, which would be probably not smart, but anyways, did that and I just loved this bridge. I love the optical illusion it creates of a perfect circle uh, in the reflection of the pond. And the, my favorite part is that it's purely an art piece. The lake is not that big. If you look really closely at the picture, and please watch this in 4K so you can see all the detail in it. I mean, you, you can walk around that lake in about 10 minutes. It's not that critical. But they built that in the 1800s just for an art installation, which I think is really cool. So anyways, number 10, Rakatsbukra Bridge, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, in Eastern Germany. And number nine, Snowy Hallstatt, Austria. I love Hallstatt, Austria. And you again, you've probably seen this a ton of times. And luckily I've been there probably four or five times, and it's beautiful. Every single time I go there, it is absolutely beautiful. It lives up to the hype. It's about as romantic and bucolic of a piece of scenery as you could possibly imagine. But I'd never been there in the wintertime. I'd always been there in like the springtime or the summertime, and I hadn't actually had a good streak of luck the last few times I'd been there. It had been cloudy and overcast and wasn't really good for pictures. But I decided, uh, this was last January, to go to Hallstatt because it was snowing all over the place and I'd been to another location, we'll find out in number two. Uh, it was snowing there and I pulled in and it was this winter wonderland. It was just amazing. So I went to a very, very common place to take pictures uh, and you can always find this spot if you park, like in the cave parking lot, and you'll know what I mean if you're driving in, you park in the cave parking lot uh, and then you just walk down the stairs and then look to your left and if you see like 19 tripods, and three people about to fly a drone, that's how you know you're in this spot. So again, I've seen this picture taken hundreds of times, but I wanted my version of it. So went ahead and set up, uh, took this picture. And what I love about it is you can see some snowflakes falling through the air. If you look on the water, uh, you can still see some snowflakes. So that's really cool. I loved this picture and I loved visiting Hallstatt. It's getting a little crowded with tourists. And that's why my favorite village in Austria is actually a town, a little village called St. Gilgen. It's about 45 minutes away uh, drive from Hallstatt. Okay, number eight is this one. And I know we could use a better model, sure, but this was probably one of my personal favorites uh, because I got to experience it live. Uh, this is me getting out of a Rolls Royce Phantom in front of the Peninsula Hotel in Hong Kong. So I'll post a link to the video above of my experience riding in the Rolls Royce and give you a little walkthrough of it. But it's just a really cool, like it was a frivolous expense. It was a couple hundred bucks but I went ahead and decided to do it just so I could say I had done it. And then of course, Brian Kelly one-ups me and did the helicopter transfer later uh, in the year, but that's okay. I love this picture. Even though it's kind of out of focus, uh, I simply gave the camera to one of the people standing there. I was like, here, take two or three pictures. I'm honestly not sure if they even work at the hotel, but they played along fine and they got 
mostly the good picture, even though it's kind of out of focus. So I love this. It was needless. It was kind of ridiculous, but it was a really, really cool experience. So if you're ever going to Hong Kong, you just have too much money laying around, stay at the peninsula. I mean, staying at the peninsula is expensive in and of itself. Once you're there, you might as well just spend $200 more and get the airport transfer with the Rolls Royce. It's pretty stinking cool. Again, check out the video. I'll put a link to it up here and then also down below. Okay, number seven was from November of 2017. These are the Tagalalang, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, Tagalalang rice patties in Bali near the town of Ubud. And these rice patties are still in use and they're just off the side of the road. And whenever you go to see these, you'll you'll know when you're there because of the hordes of tourists and then also with the people coming up trying to sell you uh, entry tickets to a place that's just accessible to anybody along the side of the road. Ultimately, you pay them a couple bucks. What I do enjoy though, <laughs> if you ever go there and some, some guy's like, hey, let me give you entrance to the whole park, it'll cost you, you know, whatever um, rupiah to, to get in, which is usually, again, like three or four dollars. You just always say, cool, can I get a receipt? And they'll just be like, ah, ah. Uh, um, yeah, obviously they're not <laughs> any sort of official entity, uh, but that's okay. I mean, if somebody uh, if you, wants a couple bucks to watch your motorcycle while, or your little moped while you're in the park, I don't think it's a bad investment of money. But anyways, um, I loved these rice patties. I loved the geometry and I love the story that they tell um, because people need food and the earth would yield food. And so they had to figure out the best way of getting the most food they could from the earth. But it, it's almost respectful in a certain way. Like we're, we, we want to get food from the earth, but we want you to maintain your shape. So they cut into these cliffs or these hills to make these little rice paddy terraces. And to me, the, the geometry of it is just beautiful. It's the, the symbiotic relationship between man and nature, where man takes from nature, but nature still gives to man. It's just, it's a pretty, it tells a really cool story in my opinion. Even though this isn't the best photo, the light was kind of, kind of dull. Uh, I just, I still really enjoyed it. Number six was really cool. Number six is the picture of this penguin. And I don't even know where I was. I was way south of Punta Arenas in Chile. Uh, I'd driven literally to the end of the road, depending on how you define it, almost the end of the Pan American Highway. Uh, even though most other people say it goes through Ushuaia, it's fine. There was a sign that said Fin de Camino, which to me means the end of the road. Boys to Men, love that song. Anyways, uh, I reached the end of the road and I just started walking because there was this lighthouse that I wanted to get to. Uh, long story long, I guess, at this point, I didn't make it to the lighthouse, but I was coming back and what I was really excited about is when I was walking down there, I saw a penguin. Then the penguin saw me and it was like, peace, and then went back into the ocean all cutely. And I was like, man, I wanted to take a picture of you and become friends with you and like put a bow tie on you for some reason and watch you surf. Obviously that's a movie Happy Feet, but I did actually see this penguin. So um, what I realized later is that these penguins get tired because, well, they're penguins. They're, they're uh, swimming around looking for food and they get tired sometimes. So when they get tired, they end up going on shore uh, because on shore is a little bit safer for them because they're not gonna get eaten by the killer whales or sharks or anything like that, or krakens or Cthulhu or whatever. Um, so this one, it waited for me to go past and continue on my hike, and then it came up on the shore again and went to sleep. And so I came back and I saw it was there and I approached all quietly and got, honestly, probably too close. I, I think animals, you, you need to keep your distance from them to make sure that they stay wild animals and not dependent on humans for anything. But I just approached as quietly as I could and I got, again, probably too close to this animal but was able to get some really cool snapshots of it. And it was just having itself a little nap. And so I'm sure today that penguin is swimming in the ocean at the bottom of the earth and just having a great time. Hopefully just had a, some great fish, but I love this picture. It's, this, it's great. This was uh, with my 24 to 70 f 2.8 uh, G Master lens. And I wish I would have had my 70 to 200 so I could have been a little further away, but I had what I had. So I had to get a little closer than I, than I should have. But I think the picture was worth it and hopefully I didn't affect the penguin too much. Okay, number five is a picture that I took with my Phantom 4 Pro drone high above Hong Kong. Now, having gone back and looked at the regulations, I probably shouldn't have taken this picture or probably shouldn't have been flying my drone over the city so high. Um, the drone has been a really cool part of 2017 for me. Part of me is very surprised that I haven't crashed it yet 
because I almost crashed it into a tree and into the lake for number 10 at Racketsbruka. Um, I went into a tree above my gym in Dallas. Um, in this picture in Hong Kong, there was a bird that was circling above it and I thought the bird was about to attack so I was trying to like plan evasive maneuvers or something. But anyways, I love a top-down perspective of a place that you're familiar with because it shows you just a completely different look. So shooting top down, especially in a place in like Hong Kong where everything is so exaggeratedly tall, just was a really, really cool look for me. And for those of you asking, the drone that I have is a Phantom 4 Pro, and I posted a review to that, um, or I did a video review of that. I'll post a link to that up here and then down here as well. Um, I love the Phantom 4 Pro, especially over the DJI Mavic Pro. Even though the Mavic Pro is a little bit more port or a lot more portable, I love the image quality from the Phantom 4 Pro. Uh, the one inch Sony sensor is fantastic with lots of dynamic range. And I think it's worth sacrificing the portability. I mean, it still fits in a carry-on, but it's like barely. Uh, and it takes up a lot of room over the Mavic, which just folds right up. I think the Mavic is the choice for video. Uh, and I, I don't actually shoot that much video with my drone. I mainly just shoot pictures with it. So for me, image quality is paramount. And that's why I love the Phantom 4 Pro. But this picture of Hong Kong, just gave me a really, really unique look at a city that I really, really love. All right, number four is Torres del Paine National Park in Patagonia in Chile. Uh, I went down there in September. It was shoulder season. There wasn't really that many people around and or there weren't, there was. Anyways, it, it really felt like I had the park to myself and it's a massive park. And aside from a couple of like travel mistakes that inevitably I always make, uh, like forgetting that part of that part of the world doesn't take credit cards with regularity and almost kind of getting locked out of the park and not being allowed back in. Um, it, it's a massive place and it is raw and beautiful. It's far away from literally everything. So to get to Torres del Paine, you fly from, I flew from Dallas to Santiago, which is a nine hour flight, Santiago de Punta Arenas, which is about a three hour flight to the southernmost city on the, U, or on the American hemisphere mainland. Uh, and then I drove north to a town called Puerto Natales, which is about a three hour drive. And then from there, it's another three hour drive to Torres del Paine. And then once I got to the park, it was about an hour and a half drive to my hotel at Lago Grey. So to get that, you have to be going there on purpose. And I think the best places in the world are some of the hardest to get to for that reason. Uh, and this place did not disappoint. The landscapes were incredible. They were raw, they were rugged, they were beautiful. Uh, and then you had me, like uh, just ill-prepared, but I had my cameras and just had a blast taking pictures out there. It was cold, it was windy, uh, but I made my best effort and I think I got some great pictures uh, as a result. So this picture to me reminds me of just the, the you see the jagged edges of the mountain, it just reminds me of the landscape there. It felt very, historic, felt very ancient. Like this is, this is what the world used to look like, the whole world before mankind kind of flattened everything out or the glaciers flattened everything out. It just seemed very, very raw. So that's what I loved about Torres del Paine. Okay, number three. This was one of the luckiest pictures that I got the entire year. This is a shot of the Sydney Opera House with a supermoon directly above it. Uh, for those of you not familiar with the supermoon, that's when the moon is, I guess, a little bit closer to the earth, and so it appears much larger on the horizon and a little brighter. Uh, it happened a lot last year, and it'll happen twice this year, or three times this year, I think. Uh, and everybody kind of goes crazy about it now because everybody kind of goes crazy for everything. So they were like, blood supermoon apocalypse or something like that. Wolves were jumping out. Uh, but this was a supermoon, and I, to be 100% honest, I had no idea it was a supermoon that night. And what had happened was I was walking around Sydney, it was a Sunday night, and I was gonna meet a coworker of mine out at Circular Quay, which is around where like the Harbor Bridge and the Opera House is. We were gonna meet there for dinner. Uh, we ended up going to the Ro it's this terrible Mexican food restaurant in the Rocks, which again, I, I understand makes no sense because I live in Texas, which is famous for being very close to Mexico, and we were in Australia, which is famous for being not very close to Mexico, but we decided to get Mexican anyway. Don't do that. Anyways, uh, so I, being me, I had my camera backpack on as I was walking out to meet him. So I had my camera with me, my new Sony A7R III, which I'm shooting this with, and I also had my tripod with me. And so I went out by uh, Circular Key and saw it was a bright moon, and so this random guy uh, just asked, uh, his name's Perry. Uh, Perry, I found out later, Perry asked me, he was like, hey man, you're here to shoot the supermoon? And I was like, duh, I'm here to shoot the supermoon. 
well, what kind of idiot wouldn't know there was a supermoon tonight? And then I was like, holy crap, there was a supermoon tonight. Totally didn't know it. Uh, so set up the tripod and luckily the, the moon started right here and the opera house was right here. It just gradually went right above the opera house. So I got this picture. I loved it. Hang on one second. I uh, actually got a print made of this one um, just because I love it so much. So I was really, really happy with this shot, obviously. And uh, it's definitely one of the favorites that I've taken with the new Sony a7R III. Okay, so number two is from Lake Bled in Slovenia. Now, Lake Bled sounds kind of heavy metal, right? Lake Bled, da -da -da -da. So, I'm an idiot. Uh, <laughs> But Lake Bled is obviously next to the town of Bled in Slovenia, and Slovenia is just south of Austria. It's in a pocket of Europe that you probably haven't heard of. Most tourism of Europe is of Western Europe, but lately you've started to see more and more uh, articles come out about what they call Central or Eastern Europe. It's more Central, honestly, so like Slovenia, uh, Hungary, Croatia, stuff like that, getting more into Eastern Europe. Uh, but Slovenia is... <laughs> It's, it's one of those places where the letters start looking different, is, the, is what I always tell my friends. So it feels a little bit more foreign, because when you go to like Germany or Austria, the letters look mostly the same. You just have, imag have to imagine somebody shouting them at you, and that's my impression of German. Uh, but Slovenia is where you start to see a couple of letters that look different. Same thing for the Czech Republic, uh, definitely in, in Budapest or Turkey. Uh, so it just feels a little bit more foreign, but um, you have this beautiful, beautiful bucolic scene and you have this island right in the middle of this enormous lake that has this incredible old medieval looking castle or chapel on it actually uh, and church and it's just perfect so i've been out there i think three or four times now this is the first time i've been out there where there was a big snow cover uh, so just like Hallstatt, which I think was number, what was it, number nine, uh, being in Lake Bled when it was covered in snow was just a delight. And so for this picture, I really wanted to get a lot of symmetry. I wanted the horizon or the, the, the water line to go right across the middle of the picture so you could see the island above and the landscape above. But it was also really early in the morning, so there was really, really good reflection on the water because the water was very still. So I just love this picture. There's a lot of symmetry. And then the negative space over to the left of the image. I just, I love it. It's, I think technically it's probably the best picture I took in 2017, uh, even though it emotionally there's some other pictures which are more favorite. So that's number two. And then my number one top picture of 2017 for a lot of reasons is this one. This is my hometown. This is Dallas, Texas at night. And what's really special about this is I haven't been doing photography for that long. It's been a, it's been a couple of years and I, I like to think I've gotten better, uh, hopefully more quickly than, than would reasonably be expected. But I made a really big investment. Um, and there's a company called Epic Helicopters out of Fort Worth, Texas, who I fly with quite a, like fairly often. And I've been talking to Epic about doing a doors off photo flight at high altitude over Dallas. Um, all of the flights I had done with them had been about 800 or 1,000 feet, uh, maybe up to 1,500 feet. I had done some doors off flying with them, but even at night, and, and everything had been I, you know, great. I love taking pictures of Epic helicopters. The pilots are great. Uh, they're not paying me to say this or anything. In fact, I've paid them a ton of money. Uh, but anyways, um, I went ahead and got, and got in touch with them and we started planning this out. I, I, I had an idea of the places that I wanted to go see and I wanted to do the first ever high altitude nighttime photo shoot over Dallas from a helicopter. And I haven't been proven wrong yet. I think I was the first one to do it, me and uh, Wesley from Epic Helicopters. So we went up in the air up to 6,500 feet, I think at the highest point. And I was simply me just holding the camera outside of the side of the helicopter uh, with nothing but a car seat belt holding the end, taking pictures of Dallas. And this one ended up being my favorite. Uh, so you see Dallas up in the top right hand corner and then you see this black expanse going through the middle of it. Well, that's the Trinity River kind of area of Dallas. And then on the other side, you can see uh, some of the, what they call the Trinity Groves area. And then you can see also the Dallas's two new Calatrava bridges, uh, the Margaret uh, Hunt Hill Bridge and then the Margaret McDermott Bridge. So the double marges as some people call them. Nobody calls them that, I call them that. But anyways, this picture represents a lot to me because I went ahead and created like my own 
website for this, dallasaltitude.com. It was a big photo project, and it was kind of my first big, big thing, my first big personal project as a photographer. And so the, the website did great. It was shared like a thousand times on Facebook, ended up selling some prints and some licenses for specifically this image because it's the best one. Um, and it really, really w it represented the next step for me as a photographer. So I'm very grateful to Epic Helicopters for helping me with that. We had to work very closely with regional air traffic control uh, and with the Love Field Tower to make sure that all the airplanes that were landing were going underneath us, which is how high we were, It's kind of cool. So anyways, that is definitely my number one picture for 2017. Okay, so that does it for my top 10 pictures of 2017. I have a bunch of honorable mentions, which you can actually see on andystravelblog.com with this, uh, with the accompanying article for this video. Uh, but I wanted to kick it to you. Which one's your favorite? Which one do you like the most? And the reason you like it could be different from mine, and that's fine. Uh, and I've also listed a lot of my camera gear that I used below, and I also am gonna post a link to my what's in my bag video so you can actually see everything that I used. Um, so yeah, tell me what you think. Tell me which one is your favorite in the comments below. And it's only January 21st of 2018 and I already have some, some pictures that are going to be absolutely mind blowing and definitely near the top of my top 10 pictures in 2018 video. So, I hope you are having a great 2018 so far. If you're a photographer, I hope you're out taking some amazing images and creating some great memories and having a lot of fun while you're doing it. Um, so until next video, this is Andy from Andy's Travel Blog saying happy 2018, and we'll see you next time.